thank you so much for joining me. Um, it's well documented, and we all know that the next uh, area of wealth and growth in the world is Africa. Um, it, it, I, I'm not saying that lightly. We know why, for instance, President Putin has allowed Wagner to infiltrate so many parts or work in many parts of Africa. We also know why China is spending so much money and resources on uh, training. They have done for, for years and years and years training African en engineers and being involved in Africa. Um, if there was no Africa, we would have no mobile phones because it's the, you know, the, the, the metal that go into mobile phone come from that. I mean, the list goes on. It, everybody admits that Africa is the next cradle of wealth for this world. So, of course, it makes sense uh, that we train people to actually know what Africa's about, to know about the history is, of it is, to engage and what have you. So, when I read this story in The Voice, I was more than alarmed because there's only one course in the whole of Europe uh, that teaches the history of Africa and the African diaspora. And that's at the University of Chichester. And yet, for some inexplicable reason, they've sought to finish that course. I mean, it's not been widely, ad widely advertised and even so has produced six current PhD students for the university, as I said before, could produce even more. I thought we'd look into this because Professor Hakim Adi is somebody who is at the top of his game when it comes to teaching people about Africa. And we're talking about all the time, post-Brexit, about how we have to forge more links already. We've done that with India and the government is already looking into forging links with Africa. But you can't do that unless you have people who know what the hell they're talking about. And this course would have been one of those really, really great things to have. Uh, I'm delighted to say that joining me now is uh, Professor Hakim Adi, who's Professor of the history of African Africa and African diaspora at the Uni of Chichester, a course that they've seen fit to finish with. Um, Professor, thank you so much for, for joining me. I, the words short-sighted spring to mind. I mean, just, just tell us what your course uh, teaches or taught and, and why this has come about. Thank you for having me on your programme. Uh, yeah, I'm as... Um kind of dumbfounded and disappointed as you are. Only a couple of years ago, the university was almost boasting about this course, boasting about the fact that it produced, uh, you know, six PhD students and that we had such a big cohort of PhD students in history. I, I must say that many of them of African and Caribbean heritage and the course was initially set up to, to address the problem that we have with history in Britain, where young people in particular of African and Caribbean heritage do not engage with history because of its kind of Eurocentrism and so on. Yeah. This course was set up. We look at history, the history of Africa and its diaspora. That is to say, people of African heritage in Britain, the United States, in the Caribbean, in other parts of the world, and how that history is interrelated. So in, in many ways, it's a course on particularly on modern history, the last 200 years, but more importantly than that, it trains people as historians. We take mm. people an interest in history. They may not even have history as a first degree. They may not even have a degree, but we will take them, we will train them, and we've been able to produce actually, you know, in total, seven people have gone on to do PhD studies. Uh, in fact, our, our first student to gain a PhD gained her PhD just uh, literally a month ago. So we think it's a very successful course. The mm. students think it's successful. They've set up a petition. They're, they're saying all these things. Yeah, yeah. The university well, does. The university no, just... I was going to say it's short-sighted because, as I mentioned before, with Africa becoming an emerging power, it, that your course could go a long way to 
opening up or broadening the amount of people you give this knowledge to and and setting them up and you know that this is what china does it's what russia does all of these countries do this and invest very heavily in the history of africa understanding it in the regions and and and, and what have you uh, and have been very successful there so th this is yet another reason that that it perplexes me have you been told why this decision was taken well, I've been told that the decision was made because the, the course hasn't recruited sufficient numbers of students. I have to say that there are there is at least one other course at the university history course, which has very similar numbers of students, and that has not been, been axed. Of course, one could also point to the fact, as you said in your introduction, that the university has not promoted the course, has not advertised the course widely. All the time I'm being confronted with, with young people in particular saying, well, I didn't know about the course. I didn't hear mm -hmm. about it. We have managed to recruit internationally from Africa, oh. from the Caribbean, from North America, from Canada, from Hong Kong, as well as Britain. But the university claims not sufficiently. And obviously the answer is to do, do a better job of, of advertising and marketing the course. So, no, I think it's very short-sighted. As you say, the, the, a course like this helps people understand the world, mm -hmm. not just... Mm -hmm. Africa, but Africa in particular, but Africa's relations with other parts of the world, particularly with Britain, because many of our students are British based and are interested in the relationship between Africa and people of African heritage or Caribbean heritage in this country. So there's also that very important history of Britain, which is a, a big part yes. of what we do. Uh, looking yes. at Britain's relationship with Africa over the last 200, 300 years, maybe looking at Britain's relationship with the Caribbean, looking at the experience of African and Caribbean people in Britain as well. We teach all that, but as I said again, we allow people to research and, and support them in carrying out research into all those areas of history. So we are very concerned. I should add, in addition to axing the course, the university, mm -hmm. of course, also wants to ax me. So oh. they say, yes, oh yes. They're Have you saying, done something well, wrong? <laughs> Well, uh, you know, I brought uh, seven, you know, six PhD students to the university. As you say, I could could be said I'm at the top of my game. I write lots of books. I'm mm. well known in throughout the world. Perhaps a few years ago, they were, you know, saying what an important contribution I was making to the university and so on. Now, rather than saying, okay, maybe we didn't recruit enough students, perhaps the director of marketing. Uh, should lose his job or some they for somehow link my post with this particular course and say that I have to go as well. So it's oh. yes. It's, um, well, let, let me you, let me just say if anybody from the University of, of Chichester wants to get in touch and, and explain this to us, we'd be very keen to hear what they they have to say. Um, the, the the one thing that I I, I I just want to come back to right at the moment with the King with King Charles uh, talking and there's news that they want to visit the Commonwealth countries, quote unquote, a lot lot more because they realise with Jamaica with the West Indies and what have you, that um, these are countries calling from a break, if you like, from from Britain, and they want to very much mend those bridges and see if they can't keep that part of the Commonwealth together. Surely uh, an important part of any civil servants, of anybody doing that, is knowing the history into which they're going so they don't make mistakes like going around in a 1950s Land Rover looking all colonial <laughs> at its very basis. So that is another reason when you've got one part of the establishment talking about forging greater links and having greater understandings of Africa and the Caribbean, etc. But you have to have the knowledge and, and the background and a deep understanding in order to do that effectively, do you not? Exactly right. And in fact, I think it was the point that uh, you, you may well know that uh, Bell Ribeiro Addy, who is MP, who's the chair of the All Party Committee on Reparations, uh, tabled an early day motion uh, about this very subject, and then tried to contact the university to say, well, you know, how important the course was. Maybe we could she, she and the vice chancellor could discuss the continuation of the course, and the the vice chancellor of the university refused to to, to speak with her. Uh, we also had somebody else who has great experience in public relations. 
public affairs, approached the university and said, okay, you, you need someone to market this course. I will give my expertise cost-free for the university to help market the course. The university refused even to acknowledge the email, hasn't responded to that person. So the, the university has had opportunities to market the course, to work with others, including politicians, to to, to find ways of using the course in the way that you described with, with mm. civil servants, with to help people uh, develop their understanding of these relations and this history, and they they've you know completely rejected those overtures. So it it just looks as though they want to get rid of the course. They want to get rid of the person who taught on the course. They they're using that. Uh, that excuse or that justification, if you like, to, to get rid of me. And of course, that will also harm my the students that I supervise at PhD level who will have oh, yes. nobody, nobody who has the expertise I have to supervise the end of their, their PhDs and so on. So it, it is a very serious, short-sighted policy in which I haven't been consulted at all. It was but just... How can you, let, 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 me, let me just clarify this. Are you saying you have not been officially given any reason for this decision? The reason I have been given is that the course did not recruit enough students. And that's it? That's it. That's it. And as I say, it recruits a similar number of students to another history course, which is still running. You know, I have the, the figures uh, provided by the university. Uh, there has never before this year been any criticism of the numbers of students on this course. In fact, I am the one who has asked for more publicity, for more marketing, mm. for you know, a greater reach. There has never there have never been any targets set, none whatsoever. It was only this year that a target was set when the figures for recruitment were already known and at a time when most students would not have enrolled in the course because the, the target was set in May and the course was, was closed in May or, or recruitment was suspended. Oh. Yes, I mean, yeah. normally we recruit most people between May and September, because people, you know, sometimes a bit slow yeah, yeah. rolling and have other things going on in life. I think three people have contacted me who said, oh, we were about to enroll, but we couldn't. Other the people doors. did enroll, other people who yeah. did enroll and were told, well, you can't, the course is closed, How including some people who wanted to do the course last year. One person, who, and I think had some problem, I can't quite remember whether it was illness or something, didn't enroll last year said, I'll come back for September, and has now been told she, she can't do the course. So it, it's it's very it's disappointing, um, very frustrating. But Hakeem, let me, let me ask you something, um, and, and we've, I guess, skirted around this. Do you think that there is any part of the fact that it is about Africa, it is about brown people, is it seen as niche? And I hate to misuse a word that has been taken from people of color, from black people and misused um, when we talked about staying woke to the injustices of racism. And, and actually, maybe it is a good way to apply this word, staying woke. Do you think that has, or do you feel, because the university may push back and say no, but it's not about what they, it's, it's how it's perceived on the receiving end, if we're to talk about the feelings and the impact. Do you feel that race, nature, has, you know, the nature of your course has anything to do with this? Yes. <laughs> Short time. Yeah. I, can't, I can't think otherwise because there is a, another course with similar numbers of students, which is still ongoing. And my yeah. course has been closed. And the university has said that they want to move to more generalized degrees. Well, what does this uh, generalized degrees mean? Does that mean degrees which exclude the entire history of Africa and people of African descent? This is ridiculous. How you can have a history degree program at any level in the university and not include Africa. And of course, before I ran this course, I taught on those general history degrees, various different yeah. courses and so, so on. So it's not like you don't know about and don't include those parts. It's just no. that with your expertise, you can give a, a dimension to it that, uh, to come back to King Charles and what he's talking about, absolutely lends itself to the future of Britain trade-wise, understanding-wise, people-wise, Understanding and people-wise. 
I, when I first joined the university, I ran a course called Africa and the African Diaspora in the Modern World for first year students. In my first semester, that course was, wrote, was voted module of the year by the students. And the yeah. students were all white students. They said, they... isn't this great? Isn't this great? We've never heard this history before. Isn't it important? Isn't it great? And now, now things, only because we've run out of time, but I do thank you because, as I said, when I read this, I was like, you know, and I, I, as I say, I read all the newspapers right across and I read The Voice as well. And this story sprung to mind. Hakim Adi, they're professor of the history of Africa and the African diaspora at the University of Chichester. And as I said, if University of Chichester, if you want to get in touch and explain all of that, you are more than welcome on the show. Coming up, do you have high blood pressure? You might not even know that you have have. Uh, so if so, have a good listen. And also why Brits are using soap much, much, much less these days. What is going on? We'll be talking about all that and more right after this. This is Talk TV.